now it's time for the only show that doesn't care about ratings, Witness Radio, with your host, Ryan Muniak. Welcome to Witness Radio, where we don't care about ratings because our sole purpose is to save souls. On purpose. You can find more episodes and give feedback at witnesstalkradio.org. We don't really have a specific topic for this episode because I'm, well, I'm mashing together a, a few good clips that never got used. Our first clip comes from the University of Cincinnati, where I met up with Tristan and Alan. These guys were walking around during Welcome Week when I stopped them to have a chat. You're listening to when this radio. What happens after someone dies? <laughs> uh, well, I am Catholic, so I, I believe they go to heaven. Okay. What about you? I, I believe there's a heaven, yeah. Okay. You, now, you gave me your spiritual background. You're Catholic. What about you? Any any I spiritual background? Catholic school. I went to Catholic school when I was a kid, but nothing. Okay, so you're just kind of whatever right now? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, does everybody go to heaven? Uh, well, that's a great question. I, I'm more of a Catholic in name, but I believe that unless someone is like truly, truly evil, I think everyone's got a chance to go to heaven. Okay. And uh, what, what about you? Does everyone go there? Pretty much same thing Tristan just said. Like, you know, you have to have like a certain extent. Like, if you're like evil, and yeah, you can't go. So, where's that cutoff? Where, what, what's the line that, that people ride? You know, how how do we know if if someone's truly evil or if they're if they're okay? I mean, something like for me, something like murder, because taking someone's life is something you can't fix. Okay. What about you? Yeah, it's like it's like murder, like those crimes that like you know, like taking someone's money, like hedge funds and stuff, like some of that stuff. Okay. So stealing too. Steal, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, now you guys come from the Catholic background, uh, so you use the Bible as your as your main book of, of where you get your beliefs, right? I'd say yes. Yep. yep. Okay. So in there is uh, the Ten Commandments. And uh, you guys basically mentioned to them stealing and, and murder. How do you guys think you're doing? Do you think you're good enough to get to heaven? I hope so. I think I'd... I don't know, there's the thing, idea of purgatory. Take a little time to make up for what you did. I think purgatory would be alright for me. What about you, Al? Just purgatory all the way, man. I don't think I'll go to hell. I mean, I haven't killed anybody or stolen from anyone, so... Okay. Well, let, let's go through a couple of those Ten Commandments, see how you guys are doing, okay? Uh, so, have you ever told a lie before? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes? <laughs> okay. W- what do you guys call people who tell lies? Uh, liars. Right. And uh, you guys say you've never stolen anything. I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> You guys did admit to, to lying, so have you ever stolen anything, even something small? Oh, something small, yeah, like a pencil from someone, like, one time. Okay, what about you? Uh, I call it borrowing, because mostly from friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call it borrowing. Borrowing, but you don't give it back, right? Eventually, I give it back. <laughs> well, what about, uh, you know, actual stealing, where you don't give it back? Um, you know, a lot of people uh, are guilty of illegally downloading music or movies off offline. What about that one? Have you are you guilty of that? Uh, movies, yes. I do Spotify though, so I pay for my music. Okay, okay. And uh, so we we got uh, two people guilty of stealing. So what do you call someone who steals? A thief. Very good. Next one. Uh, let Let's go with the murder thing. You got you guys murder anybody? No. No. Nah. Good. I'm standing right next to you guys who haven't murdered anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch your mouth now, okay? So listen, Jesus said uh, that if you uh, hate your brother, if you uh, speak angrily at someone, that's the same as murder. God sees that as murder in your heart. So that's how that's how uh, high God's standard is compared to our standard. Have you guys ever hated somebody or spoken angrily towards someone? Uh, not to such an extreme point. I mean, everyone gets mad, but... I try to stop myself and collect my thoughts before I start saying stuff I'd regret. So, I mean, sometimes I mean, you think you hate someone, but I don't think I've ever truly hated somebody. What about you? Yeah, I've never truly hated someone or anything like that. You know, I'm just, like, trying to be, like, a chill mindset at all times. What about in rush hour traffic and somebody cuts you off? I mean, you don't hate them. You just get a little mad at them, man. Come on. Yeah. 
that's the thing. You know, that that anger level. You know, th- that that's what God looked at. You, if you're angry with someone without cause, you know, He sees that as murder. But let me go with one more. Okay, uh, Bible says, "Do not commit adultery." But Jesus took that one a step further too. He said, "Whoever looks with lust." has committed adultery already in his heart. Are you guys have you guys done that one? Oh, I'd say everyone's guilty of that. I mean with today just the standards are so much lower so okay. So what about you, Tristan? Oh uh, yes, personally yes. And Alan? Yep. Okay. So here here here's the, the verdict guys. You've admitted to me that you're lying, thieving, <laughs> murderers at heart by God's standard and adulterers at heart by God's standard. That's not good. That tells me that, you know, maybe you guys uh, might, might want to talk to God and, you know, work some things out. You know, uh, you guys were mentioning purgatory earlier, right? So what, uh, what would you say, uh, wh- where in the Bible would purgatory be? What do you mean by where in the Bible? Like, wh- where would you find the information about purgatory in the Bible? Not a clue. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to give you an exact verse or anything like that. Well, I want to encourage you guys to go online, check that out for yourselves. But the Bible actually doesn't say anything about purgatory. Here's what it says. It says, it's appointed for man once to die, and after that comes judgment. So as soon as we die, it's heaven or hell. There's no middle, middle ground. So knowing that you guys are guilty of breaking God's laws, do you think... God would send you to heaven or to hell if you were to die today? Well, I hope I'd get the uh, the loving forgiveness that's talked about in the Bible for my sins and be able to go to heaven. Okay. What about you? Same. Okay. Well, now, that, it does talk about the loving forgiveness, but there's a catch to it. Okay. Do you guys know what the catch is? Okay. The catch is this. You're guilty criminals just like I was. And God should punish you just like he should punish me because we've all broken his laws and he says that the punishment for sin for doing things that are not in accordance with his law is uh, the punishment is death and hell but he did something for everybody so that we could escape hell and that was Jesus you guys, you guys went, went to the Catholic school and everything what did Jesus do he died for all of us to save us all from death. Right. See, he came to this earth for the sole purpose of dying to take our place, to take our punishment, the punishment we deserve, upon himself. You know, when he hung on that cross, when he was beaten and whipped and, and crucified, that should have been us hanging there. That should have been us getting that punishment. But he did it for us so that we could be set free from sin and death. But he says you have to do something in order to have that payment credited to your account. Do you guys know what that is? Mm, no, I tell him spacing right now on it. What about you, Tristan? Uh, repentance or charity? One of the two. Repentance is one. Good. You were you were half listening in class. <laughs> no, the other thing is to believe, to put your trust in Jesus Christ. You know, repent doesn't just mean say sorry or confess your sins to a priest. It means to do a 180. You know, if you were to walk into McMicken here and you didn't want to be in there anymore, what do you got to do? You got to turn around and walk out. That's repentance. And then the trust thing, it's not just believing in Jesus, but putting your trust in him like you would trust a parachute if you were to jump out of a plane. You don't just believe it's real and then jump without it. You got to put it on. Trust your life to it. So that's what Jesus said. Repent and trust in him. And then you can be saved. Then you can escape hell and go to heaven when you die. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, guys, I want to encourage you to think about the things that I've shared with you today. You guys got Bibles at home? Yes. At home, yes. Okay, good. Grab a Bible. If you don't, if you don't have it here on campus, BibleGateway.com, Bible.com. Plenty of Bible websites out there, absolutely free. But... Go into the Bible. Make sure that what I'm saying is true. Don't believe me just because I'm some guy with a microphone, okay? You know, test it. Make make sure that what I'm saying is true. Uh, The book of John talks about Jesus. It's 21 chapters, 21-day challenge for you guys. One chapter a day. Read it. See what it says, okay? These two profess to be Catholic, but based on their comments, 
it's unlikely that they actually practice their faith. Many Christians think they need to know everything about Catholicism before witnessing to Catholics. But did you notice most of the Catholic doctrine never came up in this conversation? The only doctrine we did discuss was purgatory. But even then, all I really needed to know was that the Bible doesn't mention it. Don't be afraid of people in false religions. Just study the truth of the Bible, and you'll do just fine. You're listening to Witness Radio. Speaking of knowing the truth, Ricky Gantz from G220 Radio knows it and proclaims it regularly in the open air. This next clip is from Rockin' on the River, a festival near Cleveland. From different churches on the west side of Cle- uh, near Cleveland, and we are out here because we want to share with you the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, we're out here because we care about your souls. We care about where you'll spend eternity. So often, my friends, we go through life. We go through life, and we we make plans. We plan to be to be here this weekend. We plan to come to this event. We plan to do things the rest of the weekend. We plan for things in our lives. We plan for these opportunities to do things, my friends, but we do not take the time to plan for eternity. We do not take the time to plan what will happen when we die. You see, the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 says, we will die and then we will stand before the Lord. And so often, so many people go through life thinking that they're going to be okay with God based upon the life that they lived. They think that they've lived a pretty good life, and by living that good life, that they're going to be okay with God. You see, but the Bible tells us in Romans that there is none good. No, not one. That's not me. No one out here can say they are good, because the Bible says that we are all sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're moving a little because it was kind of loud. The wages of sin is death, and it's an eternal death. It's eternal death in a lake of fire. And we don't want that for you, and that's why we're here to share with you the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why it is so important that we take the time to think about the things of eternity, to think about those things that's going to happen to us when we die. You see, my friends? Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? You have to stay on the ground. i got to be on the ground? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so... Okay, so Ricky was just told by a staff member that he had to be on the ground. He couldn't be standing on the on the concrete block. There's nothing more important in life than knowing Jesus Christ. The Bible says that, or Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. Again, so often we think that we are going to be saved based upon our good deeds. But it is not our good deeds that saves us. It's not the fact that you attend this church or that church that saves you. It's not based upon the fact that you may give money to a a, a homeless shelter or give food to the homeless. That does not save you. It is only through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone that you can have eternal life. There is nothing more important than that. So often, we know the verse in John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But so often we do not go on and continue to read that the Bible says that those who do not believe in him are already condemned. Those who do not put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ are already walking through this world condemned. The wrath of God is already abiding on them. And that is why we are here, because we want to share with you the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, a couple months back, everybody might have heard of that movie, Noah, that came out. But I want to tell you the true biblical story of Noah. You see, Noah, for 120 years, preached the gospel to the people, and they thought he was crazy because he stood there and said, look, the judgment of God is coming. The judgment of God is coming. Repent and turn to Jesus, turn to God. But you see, they they laughed at Noah. They did not believe Noah until the rains and the floods came. And you see, that is what happens so often in life. We go through lives and we don't think about the judgment to come, but the Bible says the judgment will come. And God is faithful and true in His Word. And the thing is that God is patient with you, ma'am. He's patient with you, and He's patient to give us time. He's giving 
giving us the time to repent. Repentance is a turning from your sins and a turning to Jesus Christ. Because you see, that is what repentance is. It's not just a turning and, and, and trying to live a, a life that is, is, is morally right, because we can try to live moral lives, but again, morally, moralism will not save us. It is only through Jesus Christ. So it is a turning from our sins and a trusting in Jesus Christ. It's a clinging to Jesus Christ. And as I said, in John uh, 3.16, it says that for God so loved the world that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting lives. And that is why we are here to share that with you. Because we truly do care about your souls. We truly do care about where you will spend eternity. Because there is nothing more important than that. He's turning to something in the Bible now. The heavens declare the glory of God. So often we go through life and we don't realize how majestic God is. How gracious and glorious God is. But you see, my friends, the Bible tells us in the Psalms, the Bible tells us... What's that, ma'am? What was that, ma'am? Did you have a question? Okay. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 8, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to steal the enemy of your avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with the glory and honor, and have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and all the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is the name in all of the earth, and how majestic is God! He is so majestic. He is so glorious. He is so merciful. He is so loving. How often do we hear that, that people will say, God is love. Absolutely, God is love. But He is also wrath. He is also holy. Yes, He is, ma'am. He is also holy and just. And because He is wrathful, because He is holy, because He is just, He must judge the wicked. God will judge. There is coming a day that we will stand before the holy, just, and righteous God, the one and only true God, the triune God of scriptures. And when we stand before him, we will not be able to stand before him in and of ourselves and declare ourselves good because the Bible says there are none good. No, not one. No one is good. But see, the, the sinfulness of man is to stand there and try to proclaim our goodness. Try to justify ourselves before one another. We compare ourselves with other people who compare ourselves with other people and say, I'm better than this person. I don't seem to be doing the, thing, or doing the same things that this person is doing. Therefore, I must be okay. I'm not like Hitler. I'm not like Osama bin Laden. I'm not like some of these people. So therefore, I must be okay. But the Bible says there are none good. There is only one good, and it is Jesus Christ, the perfect God-man. Fully God, fully man, manifested in the flesh. And see, the, the God so loved the world that he sent his son. You know, Father's Day is coming up this weekend. We celebrate Father's Day. But oh, how deep the Father's love that he sent his son. He sent his son to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to willfully go to the cross and shed his blood. He didn't just, he wasn't the fact that he just was, was murdered upon the cross. He gave his life. He humbled himself, even humbling himself to the point of death, and went to the cross and shed his blood. And it, again, it wasn't the, the, just the fact that his beard was plucked from his face. It wasn't just the fact that he had the, the cat of, of nine tails whipped upon his back, 39 lashes. It was the very fact that the wrath of God was poured out upon his son. It pleased Yahweh to crush his son. It pleased the Father to crush his son. And this is the demonstration of love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. He died for those who will believe in Him. Again, the Bible says, 
it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, sir. Man wrote that. No, it, it, the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was inspired by God. You know, so that God died for us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us, demonstrating his love for us. And my friends, we have time. You have time. God is patient. He is long-suffering. He gives us time. He gives us time to come to repentance and faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And you had that opportunity today. Do not harden your hearts to the word of God. The word of God never returns void. You will walk away from here hearing the word of God and either be convicted of your sin or you will walk away from here hearing the word of God and continuing to harden your heart towards him. And I plead with you and beg of you today to not harden your hearts to God, to hear the word of God and to, to come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. It says God commands all men everywhere to repent, to trust in Jesus Christ to trust in the Son of God, the perfect and only one who lived a perfect and sinless life. Have you trusted in Him today? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Again, how majestic is God? How majestic is He that He gives us this, this beautiful world? We, we look at these, the creation of God and we look and say, how majestic, how majestic is God? How glorious and how gracious is He? We'll be right back. Ratings. We don't need no stupid ratings. You're listening to Witness Radio with Ryan Muliak. <coughs> but we like Ryan. <coughs> we do! Just go to witnesstalkradio.org. What happens so often, my friends, is because of the hardness of heart, because of the hardness of heart, because we are born in sin, we are born sinners, because of that, we rage against God. We rebel against God because that is our, our nature of sin, to rebel against Him. In Psalms chapter 2 it says, Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against the anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs, and the Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. And I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possessions. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like the potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. You see, so why do the nations rage against God? It is because of the rebellion of our hearts. It is the rebellion and the hardness of our hearts that so many people rebel and rage against God, who is so merciful, so gracious, so kind, so long-suffering, so loving, but yet so just and so righteous. But yet we rage against God. And my friends, we are here to tell you that today could be the day of salvation for you. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, turn from your sins, repent of your sins. Repentance again is a turning from your sins and a turning to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Turn to Jesus Christ today and live. You see, as the Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die and then there is judgment. We will die one day and we don't know when that day is. It could be on your way home. It could be on your way home from this tonight, sir. Yes, can I help you? It's all made up. It's not made up, sir. Do you know that to be true? Yes. How do you know that to be true, sir? You read books. You read books. How do you know those books are true, sir? You see, the word of God is true whether you believe it or not because God is true and every man is a liar. You see, this is the thing. The word of God is true because, again, God is true. God declares what is truth, not man. We can have opinions. But our opinions doesn't matter. It matters not whether what you believe, what matters whether or not is what you believe is true. You see, if God is true, 
And since God is truth and the word of God is true, then everything that the word of God says will be true and will come to pass. The word of God says that Jesus is coming again. Jesus will return. We do not know the day or the hour of Christ's return, but he will return. Will you be ready when he does? Will you be ready when the Lord, our God, Christ Jesus returns? Because he is coming in the very same way that he left. In the clouds he is coming and everyone will see him. And the Bible declares that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of Kings and let me tell you, he is already King of Kings. He is already Ruler of Rulers and Lord of Lords. He is already seated upon his throne. He rules. Whether or not you bow to him in submission today, or you will bow to him in submission on that day of judgment. And see, we are here to share with you the gospel so that you will be ready. You will be ready on that day when you stand before God. There's many different religions out there. But you see, and some, sometimes so many people will say, well, I'm trusting in this, and that is right for me, and that is my truth, and I think whatever is true for you is true for you, and that's all that matters. But truth cannot contradict. It's the law of non-contradiction. If two things say something completely opposite, they cannot both be true. And the Word of God says, that Jesus tells us that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So therefore, if Jesus is declaring himself to be true, Jesus says, I am the living water. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the doorway. And if anyone comes through the door a different, or anyone comes through and tries to enter a different way, they will be like a thief and a robber. There can only be one truth. It can't be whatever's true for you works for you, or whatever works for somebody else works for somebody else, because you do not live that way in your daily life. Nobody lives that way. If that was the case, if we said, hey, well, whatever is true for me is true for me, and whatever is true for you is true for you, try that with the police officer when you're doing 100 miles an hour down a 35 miles an hour zone, and when the police officer pulls you over to give you a ticket, say to the police officer, well, that's your truth that the speed limit was 35, but my truth says the speed limit is 100. Because you know that that police officer will give you a, a ticket. Try that in a classroom if you go to go to school. Try to say to the teacher when he comes and gives you an F on your paper and say, all your answers were wrong, say, well, that was your answer, that was your truth, but my truth says my answer was right. We don't live that way. Nobody lives that way. We know there is absolute truth and the word of God is true. And we are here to declare to you that today. As ministers of reconciliation, to reconcile you back to God through his son, Jesus Christ, who came and died upon a cross. He died and suffered on that tree, shedding his blood. And his perfect blood covers those who are in Christ Jesus. There is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. But for those who are outside of Christ, they are already condemned. And they are walking condemned. They are already judged, walking through, just awaiting the judgment of God. But you can have you can have forgiveness in Christ today if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins, turn to Christ, the only Savior. There is no Savior apart from Jesus Christ. So my friends, trust in Him today, because there is nothing more important than that. Please consider these things. My friends and I are here. If you have any questions, we're all seated around here, and we will be more than willing to talk to you and share the good news with you if you have any questions. Thank you. you can find out more about Ricky and G220 Radio, a great radio show, might I add, by going to g220ministries.com. Thanks for listening. And as always, the fields are ripe for the harvest. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and share your faith. May God bless you. This radio has been brought to you by the Muniac family.